It's a bull. Good morning. Hey, what's up? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the sea. Uh, getting our summertime weather back. Looks like the 80s plus. Clear skies, of course. And uh, again, typical Florida summer weather. Got the uh, live Coral City cam up in Miami. And uh, boy, lots of sergeant majors out there and some cool other fish. I forget what those are over there. Uh, and the brain corals are still alive. So, well, anyways, let's see what's happening today. Let's get into today's marketplaces. And uh, it looks like we are down. The coin did not get it right, but maybe it'll bowl back up later in the afternoon. Woo, boy, they are taking it down today, too. Look at that, 1914.80 right now. What is the low? Uh, we're not too far off from that low, 1913 and the high of 1938. And uh, as Ted Butler expected, they are going to take it back down. They're going to try their hardest to get it back down to that $23 level. And uh, we'll talk about what Ted says here in a little bit. Won't go into a lot of detail, but typical stuff, par for the course. Nothing to worry about. And again, opportunity for some of you folks out there to buy these dips. Uh, <clears throat> and on the other hand, maybe Mr. Butler could be wrong on this one. Uh, however, he's been pretty much right most of the time, so let's see what happens. I think he's hoping he would be wrong as well, and he says that in some of his articles. Uh, low at 24.64 and a high at 25.40, so we're quite a bit off that mark right now at 24.66. Um, and it, folks, remember in 2020, 2021, 2020 mostly, uh, silver, and prior to that, silver was making these 50 cent moves upwards and downwards, staying at a certain level. Uh, and uh, uh, when it did make its move, it kind of explosively went up to the upside. So uh, I think we're going to wait for that point here. Meanwhile, just buy the dips or wait them out, one or the other. Uh, platinum, 1,016, uh, the low, and it looks like it is sitting at its low right now uh, at 1,016, and a high of 1,043.40. Uh, platinum down as well, $100. You know, I just can't help but think that because of the uh, sanctions and the fact that a lot of platinum palladium comes out of South Africa, that uh, these markets aren't just being purposefully a monkey hammered down for some reason, you know. Uh, GATA.org believes that the uh, um, uh, government does knock the price of gold down, the Treasury Department in, in tune with central banks, uh, BIS. Uh, and they've written about it and they've talked about it for years and there's a lot of credibility behind what uh, GATA.org talks about and we'll get to their website in a little bit. Most of you are familiar with it because you read it once a week as all smart silver stackers and gold stackers do. Uh, so, uh, you know, what am I saying? Uh, this is just nonsense. These prices are just total bullshit on the CME. Gosh darn. Uh, again, I don't want to go into the crooked CME markets and the Crimex markets, but we know they are. Meanwhile, um, for the new folks is the only reason I'm going to report it or, or, or talk about it because anyone new getting into this market, this has got to be scary when you, when you jump in and you, you bought gold at 2000 or $2,070 and, uh, uh, per ounce to your new buyer. And there are some new buyers that jumped in at these highs, believe me. Um, well, I wouldn't have advised it, uh, but uh, no less. Uh, I would have wait. Uh, <clears throat> I would have told new buyers just to back off a little bit here uh, because we kind of can see the right. We, we know they, they manipulate in monkey hammer. We know that they still have these huge losses on their short positions, and they've got to exit these short positions before they can uh, let price of gold and silver and platinum go up. That includes JP Morgan. That includes the Comex, uh, Crimex exchanges that the CME runs, the crooked CME. Uh, and, and they've got to allow these short positions to, to unwind those positions. But I don't think they're going to jump back into them, even though they did this month, according to Ted Butler again. Uh, he was surprised to see that uh, uh, the shorts jumped in just as heavily. Uh, but no less, uh, at some point that's going to end, and they do have to drop these prices lower in order to uh, soften the losses that they're going to see at these levels. I don't think that there's any level-headed person that runs these big commercial banks that has these short collusive positions um, uh, really honestly believe that the price of silver is going to stay at this level or go down anytime soon. I think they're probably in panic mode. This is why you're seeing this, you know, these big ups and downs. And I think silver, the big issue with silver right now is, yeah, they can drive those paper prices down. But problem right now, I believe there is truly a shortage of above ground availability of silver right now that's causing them issues of trying to knock it back to that 23 level but purely speculative on my part however i do listen to people that are way smarter than me like ted butler like gata.org and others 
Uh, and um, according to them, we got a little ways to go here before they're going to allow that uh, market to go up, including J.P. Morgan, who has a lot to gain from their 1.2 million ounces of silver that they stole from 2012 to 2000 whatever uh, by shorting and by uh, spoofing and all the other illegal shit that they did and got away with. Again, too big to fail, too big to jail, but not too big to bail. Uh, so JP is a bunch of scumbags in my opinion, but no less, again, my opinion, bunch of scumbags, uh, but no less, uh, they're sitting on a 1.2 billion ounces of physical silver that they have loaned out to cover some of the, uh, hey, who came to the nickel, the big Chinese nickel short on the LME market? Who came with, with the product? Uh, guess, JP come to save the day okay so but JP realized that allowing that LME market to just implode and allowing the uh, LME to uh, um, not honor uh, well <laughs> just to allow it to implode like that wouldn't have helped uh, JP at all because that's where that's the uh, uh, casino that they do all their stealing at other than the Comex casino that's where their most of their theft occurs so they can't let it go bankrupt so there was a reason that JP bailed out that nickel short and it wasn't out of the goodness out of their hearts it was just out of the uh, the greediness of those motherfuckers <laughs> excuse my language there's your first drink of the day for the F word and uh, uh, but it's true it is true they are for sure uh, again, in my opinion, hmm, you notice I have to say that. So, <laughs> uh, so uh, at some point, it's going to behoove them. They also own big positions in gold as well. So it behooves them at some point to let this market ride upwards, as long as they don't destroy their own uh, uh, casino where they do most of their theft. All right. So. Where are we at right now? Good buyer's market. Let me just refresh this in the last few minutes. Let's see if she's heading back down. No, no, it looks like, uh, looks like it's kind of uh, jumped back up a little bit. Maybe we've seen the low for the day. Let's take a look at the 24-hour charts. Oftentimes, <laughs> oh, I love these monkey hammerings right here. You see that right there? Uh, but we didn't see an immediate uh, slingshot back upwards. So uh, that concerns me a little bit. Uh, again, death of a thousand cuts, kind of what the stock market, equity market's going through right now. Uh, but no less, look at that drop right here. Of course, in the CrimeX markets owned by CME, the crooks at CME, that uh, make a lot of money off these collusive, uh, manipulative, uh, major whales that go in and short these markets, whether it's nickel or whether it's uh, silver or gold, or probably even copper and wheat and all this other stuff, oil, all right? <clears throat> so, and they don't do it for any other reason than to manipulate the market, folks. They're not hedging. They're there to speculate, uh, uh, not even speculate kind of in a way. They're just there to manipulate. That's a fact. We know it. Uh, and CME refuses to respond to it. So does uh, um, the big commercial shorts, obviously, aren't going to talk about it. And the corporate mainstream, lamestream press doesn't talk about it. Well, let's move into, we, of course, we knew where gold got smacked in the Crimex market here. Let's take a look at where silver got smacked down, too, as well in the Crimex market here. Uh, midday, it's usually been happening in the morning, but here we go. Let's see if we can send, continue this trend back upwards. I think this is going to be a smackdown week for precious metals. I really do. It just kind of seems like the writing's on the wall. And as, uh, again, Mr. Butler points out clearly that these big collusive banks are still working together. They're still out there shorting this market big time, probably even spoofing it. Not quite sure where the evidence is for that, but I'm sure they're out there screwing with these markets badly like they always do with no other intent than to other than to manipulate the market downward like you're seeing here. So again, nothing to do with hedging, everything to do with being uh, criminal bastards. <laughs> uh, let's take a look at uh, uh, the uh, Dow Jones, SP, and NASDAQ right there, the preferred uh, casino for a lot of these guys. Um, and uh, let's take a well, I wonder how, many, how, how much these markets are manipulated. I'm sure they are very heavily. They give the average Joe a little piece of the pie, uh, and they, they make a large amount of it for themselves. But, geez, but here I go. I don't want to uh, go into that mindset right now. I'll just get angry. Uh, looks like the markets are up across the board a little bit. Let's see what uh, Bitcoin is doing because uh, I read an interesting article. I, I've noticed it's been following the Dow Jones, SP 500, NASDAQ, but, and those two seem to kind of work when they're all in the, you know, when one's in the green, two in the green, the other one usually is, or it might, might be slightly out of whack. But they, these three markets seem to move in tandem pretty much together. And uh, I noticed that the cryptos was moving in tandem with these three markets. However, a good article pointed out that 
really the market that the Bitcoin seems to be following for some reason, maybe it's because of the, uh, the players, is the NASDAQ. Now, it's been moving with the NASDAQ price, up and down with NASDAQ. That's what uh, Bitcoin's been doing lately, and I guess the other ones as well, or Ethereum and uh, uh, the more popular ones have been moving up and down with the NASDAQ market, primarily Bitcoin. And that might make a lot of sense if you think about it, uh, because you've got some big tech companies out there that own Bitcoin. Maybe they're getting in and out of it as well, and that, that kind of uh, um, explains the, uh, uh, the, the similarity between the uh, graphs between uh, NASDAQ and the crypto uh, market right now, which is, let's take a look here, it looks like NASDAQ is up, and guess who else is up here as well? Bitcoin is up a little bit. I think it was in the 41 range yesterday. Let me do a quick ref refresh here. However, I think I got my answer. Bitcoin is uh, following uh, the uh, NASDAQ pretty clearly as far as the chart goes. And again, that makes some sense considering that some of these NASDAQ companies, uh, particularly, what's that lady's name from the ARK Fund? Um, oh my gosh. But appar apparently she owns quite a bit of Bitcoin through that ARK Fund as well. So again, this is starting to make some clear sense here why Bitcoin is following the uh, NASDAQ market. But I said that a long time ago is that the Bitcoin, the days of making uh, like billionaires and millionaires out of the average Joe, the working class, are done as far as Bitcoin. It's over. It's finished. The whales are there. The institutions are there. And uh, they're just going to steal every bit of money they can possibly. And again, they'll, it'll dole out a little bit to the blue collar guys just to suck them back into the casino. But um, hmm. That's the way it is, sadly, folks. Hey, listen, what do I do really well better than most people out here? I know product. I know product better than most people out there. I am a wholesaler and a retailer in precious metals since 1995. I've been doing this a long time. I know a lot of the big movers and shakers in the business as well. And uh, that's, again, I'm not a great graph reader. I'm learning about graphs like you folks are. I'm learning about charts. I'm learning about, uh, not graphs, but charts, I'm sorry. I'm learning about charts. I'm learning about the uh, technical aspect of the gold and silver markets as far as uh, trade, trading go. I've learned a lot from, I mean, I've learned a tremendous amount from Ted Butler explaining on the COT reports how they do this. It's still confusing at some times to me because it seems so technical, but uh, I have learned a tremendous lot from him on that, understanding how the markets are rigged, who the players are. Same thing with GATA.org. However, what I can do just as good as any of these folks out here is I know the physical products. I know what the best deals are out there, and uh, I can make it, uh, you know, I can advise on that. As you know, uh, I advertise to beat uh, uh, JM Bullion and Atmex Bullion and some others. I, I started adding other companies in there, but I'm going to just stick to the uh, two the two biggies, particularly JM Bullion. Uh, JM is the 800-pound uh, gorilla out there. They own Sunshine Mint, I believe. I think they own Sunshine, but they definitely own um, <clears throat> Silvertown. So the access to product, if you want to understand where, uh, if there's going to be shortages, okay, if there's going to be shortages in gold and silver, look at JM Bullion because they are, again, they're owned by AMARC, a publicly traded company. They are the 800-pound gorilla. If you start to see JM Bullion become short or they're raising their prices on their generic products, especially considering that they own some of these companies right here, Silvertown and these other companies. So considering that they are the 800-pound gorilla out there, when they start rising, raising their prices and you start seeing uh, not available, not available, pre-sale, um, uh, it means that there is a shortage out there and the smaller dealers will start to see it and it'll hit them as well. Um, so let's take a look at what the best deals out there. Absolutely the worst freaking deals out there are Silver Eagles. You know I love the product, but they are so overpriced it's not even funny. Uh, same thing with Canadian Maple Leafs, even at that pre-sale price right there. Overpriced. What are the best deals out there in silver right now? Generic one ounces. There's one right there at 29 as low of, but again, that's probably if you buy 500 or more. Let's take a look and see. Give me one second here. Uh, there you go. Actually, you're going to spend more. So if you're, if you're buying a tube uh, a week or you're one of the guys out there that have been stacking, buying a little bit at a time, and you're under that 20 mark, you will end up paying uh, from JM, let's see, close to 25. So that's five, six. Holy smokes, man. Uh, man, that's like a uh, five. That's close to like a $6 premium for one ounce rounds right now. So there is some major issues out there with product folk. Uh, let me take a look at 100 ounce bars. Again, I advertise I can beat JM's prices on this, and they do have good prices. So I can definitely beat JM prices for my local people here in South Florida. And if you don't live down here in South Florida, you don't live in my area, find yourself a good local dealer, even if you have to pay a little bit more than you would from JM or anyone else. Because first off, 
you're going to get that face-to-face -face advice. You're going to get to meet the person. And if they're a good shop, they're going to always give you good advice on what to buy and they're going to tell you what to stay away from. And uh, um, not only that is you spend money in your local shop, they spend money around town. So if you're the local merchant at the uh, Ace Hardware store, you own an Ace Hardware store, it's likely that that local store is going to spend money in your hardware store, or spend money at your, your restaurant, at your whatever, okay? Um, so keep that money local, because once you ship it out of state, it's gone, folks. It's just like shipping your money out of the country, what we did for years with China, all right? Uh, shipping all our money to, uh, or shipping all our, manufacturing all our work, everything uh, uh, outside the uh, country. And w where did that leave us? Well, it left us where we are today, screwed, all right? So try to, try to buy local when you can, whether it's tires, coins, or whatever. And let's see what kind of price they're getting on 100 ounce bars. Holy smokes. Even as low as for five plus, even that, 368 over them. That's, uh, folks, I do believe there is a genuine shortage of silver out there, and the silver prices are completely this price you see right here for silver is complete bullshit. This is Crimex, this is Comex, this is the crooks that uh, I've got the uh, paper prices at this level. Um, pff, wow. Uh, it, because it's so freaking obvious and in your face, especially when you see the largest bullion company in the United States lacking any metal and the premiums are through the roof as our local dealers. Uh, it tells you without a doubt that the Crimex, Comex markets, the London, LBMA, London Bullion markets, are all crooked and rigged without a doubt. Spread that word around, let everyone know. But of course, the, you know, one of my favorite sayings, and I haven't brought it up for quite some time, is done by Robert Heinlein. I used to be a big Robert Heinlein fan uh, when I was a kid. Robert Heinlein, let me see, I probably don't even spell his name right. Uh, this, Robert Heinlein uh, quotes, let's see, let's not get a Robert Heinlein quote. And uh, I already told you what the quote is, so I don't know why I'm looking for it. And I didn't spell well either. Of course, the game is rigged. Of course, the game is rigged. But I'm going to let uh, the, the meme finish the rest of it here. And where is it? There you go. Certainly, the game is rigged. Don't let that stop you. If you don't bet, you can't win. And that's exactly where we are with these manipulative markets right here in gold and silver. But the thing is, is we know what they're doing, and it provides us an opportunity not to buy their paper garbage. That's what they want you to do. They want you to buy the paper bullshit. But what have been the smart stackers doing? What have been a lot of Americans been doing? A lot of people all over the world. And Wall Street Silver is a great example of that. They've been buying the physical stuff, all right? Taking the physical stuff off the market. So here we go. That's what you're looking for. And uh, give me one second here, and let's take a look at uh, uh, where are we going from here next. Okay, I'm out of the products. Let me get into gold and see what else is happening in gold here. Obviously, there's not a lot in gold uh, uh, prices here. Uh, I mean, as far as the uh, premiums, they haven't gone up dramatically like the price of silver does. There seems to be product out there available. Uh, still the best deal out there, in my opinion, is one ounce bar. Stick with one ounce bars. They're probably spot plus 70 to $80 in small quantities. Uh, Eagles are still probably in that, uh, well, let's see, what are we showing for gold price here? And let's just do a little math. Hang on one second. Let's see what gold Eagles are selling for. Again, I believe they're overpriced. Bars are going to be a far better deal. And let me do the math here. I'm going to ask Siri to do the math for me. Ready? 2055 minus 1923 equals um, 132 bucks. Wow, the premium has moved up on gold eagles. Boy, Siri is slow today. <laughs> uh, so 132 bucks in small quantities. You can probably get it down to 120. Uh, meanwhile, gold bars, and like I said, I'm showing you J and Bull, you're not because I want you to buy from them. Nothing wrong with this company. Uh, but because I want you to go into your local coin store and ask them if they'll meet or beat these prices. And if they can't, at least go a little bit more so you can keep that money local. And as I said, I can't tell you how, how important that is. Uh, let's take a look at Rand Refiner. It seems like they have them available in stock. Uh, it seems to be the, pri the, the lowest price here. And uh, the quantity are 25 or more. A lot of the smaller working class stackers are in that 1 to 9 quantity. So let's take a look at what they're getting for their 1 to 9 real quickly. 2011 minus 1,923 equals 
I think I could do this faster in my head. Oh, I just blew it. <laughs> How worthless is Siri? My gosh. Uh, but anyways, let's take a look. I should be able to do that in my head pretty easily. 70, uh, 1925, 75. Wow, even the bars have gone up a little bit, folks. Spot plus like 85 bucks. I can definitely beat the bar prices out here. Uh, so, wow, even the gold bars have gone up along with the price of... Uh, uh, so everything across the board, except the price of gold and silver, have gone down. It doesn't make any sense, folks. And it doesn't make any sense to, to a smart person unless that smart person realizes they are absolutely manipulating these markets for, without a doubt, factually, absolutely doing it, okay? And your corporate press doesn't talk about this. Why do you have to hear it from people like myself, small dealers or uh, other uh, uh, talking heads? You know, the, the fact that the corporate press doesn't pick this up just means that uh, they're, they're in bed with them bastards. Either they're in bed with them or they're freaking stupid. It's probably a little bit of a both there going on. Well, let's take a look at GATA.org. Good article here. UK's Royal Mint to recover gold from circuit boards and mobile phones. I think that's pretty smart, but I'm not quite sure. Uh, UK is not too smart. <laughs> I don't mean that to my UK friends that listen. I'm just saying your government is no smarter than ours. In fact, uh, probably... Uh, equally as stupid as ours uh, and your officials over there. But uh, no less, I like the idea of recovering gold from circuit boards and silver as well. They should be trying to recover silver. If they're going to do gold, you might as well do silver. Considering the fact that most, a lot of silver is probably sitting in landfills and will continues, continue to sit there. Um, maybe one day silver will get so expensive that uh, people will start mining uh, landfills again, looking for those electronic devices that got thrown away to pull the silver out. Uh, not too much new to talk about, though, and if you're new to stacking, GATA.org is the people to watch on gold. They talk about gold manipulation, who doesn't, who the players are, and if you don't know that, you are going to be a terrible player sitting at the table. Uh, you're, you, you, know, you know that old saying, if you don't know who the sucker is, you're it. <laughs> so this is why you need to read GATA.org and you read, need to read Ted Butler's stuff too. Okay, I'm going to get off into the uh, uh, political and the economic realm here. And of course, you know my opinion, this all plays into the price of gold and silver. This is why I talk about it. Some people hate politics and economics, but you know what? <laughs> There's a lot to hate sometimes, that's for sure. However, you can't ignore it. The, the, the reason that we're, this country is in such bad shape is because we're a soundbite. Uh, uh, we're a soundbite society. You know, we don't want to learn about how sausage made. We just want to get the, uh, uh, yeah, it tastes good. <laughs> and uh, yeah, they have to make it at a factory. We, we want minimal details. And the problem with having minimal details is that's how they screw you folks. Uh, and this has been going on for a long time. Syria, Assad, um, uh, I don't even know why. No, I got to say this too. Both of the biggest shithole uh, uh, issues that we have going on right now, Ukraine and uh, Syria, were both created under the uh, Obama administration. Um, and again, I'm not here to play blue or red. I think they both parties suck. You know what I'm saying for the most part. Uh, but I, you gotta you gotta call it like it is. And the fact is is that uh, it definitely it, the, both of these major issues, these major wars. Uh, and these major uh, uh, conflicts were started under the Obama administration, without a doubt. Just look, it's factual, uh, including Ukraine, because you got to remember, Ukraine was a peaceful country until the CIA did a color revolution there under the Obama administration of 2014 to 2016, all right? So, uh, and uh, where was I going with that? Well, you know, what's happened is that the rest of the world is finally realizing that the U.S. has weaponized the dollar. We've weaponized our economic system. We've even weaponized our social system, all right? And that, uh, um, that if you're an enemy of ours or, or you do something we don't like, we're going to take you out economically. And I think a lot of countries have realized that. The, U, the UAE just started getting uh, friendly with the Assad here uh, because uh, they see the writing on the wall. They see that at any time, the UAE, Saudi Arabia, all these countries uh, uh, know that any time the, the U.S. could turn against them and cause them a lot of great grief. So what they're trying to do is to get away from us, folks. At one time, all these countries wanted to be aligned with us. They wanted to be aligned with America. They wanted to be aligned with their ideals. They wanted to be aligned with our economic system. They wanted to be aligned with, uh, we're good people. Overall, we're good people, folks. Um, but what has happened is we our, you know, our goodness, we are good people, but we've been inept when it comes to electing people. We've, we've elected the worst 
frickin' people we could based on sound bites, based on money, based on, uh, um, you know, uh, anything but an educated uh, 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 guess on which uh, uh, candidate's going to be better. I mean, <laughs> well, no less. Uh, I don't want to go into elections and all this stuff, but uh, these countries are, are going to start fending for themselves and they're going to kick us to the curb, and that's not good for the U.S. dollar folks. However, it is good for the price of gold and silver. And uh, let's see what else is going on out there in the political world. Um, Ukraine sees another neighbor, okay, uh, Belarus, you know, Belarus could go in there. I'm not quite sure what the plan is right now, but uh, um, it seems to be that uh, uh, Russia is doing exactly what they want to do right now. They're going to, I believe that Ukraine will capitulate here before long. They're going to have to, uh, despite the propaganda you hear out there, they're in a big losing position. Uh, and I don't think they want to lose their entire country. I believe the country is going to be divided in two at some point. There will be no NATO weapons and no weapons there. And peace, hopefully, will prevail there once again. All right. Uh, but remember, this whole situation in Ukraine was created under the Obama administration. It was, man. It's a fact. I'm not picking on anybody. I'm not trying to be a dick. Uh, but it was, all right? And, uh, you know, and we reap what we sow. And what we, what we uh, uh, sowed out there was we got two factions, the East and the West side of the country, fighting under that cover, color revolution. We started in 2016, and here we are today. We started a civil war. We did, folks. Our officials, our government started a civil war there. And uh, they, did they do it purposely? I'm sure they did, but it's hurting us. It, it's killing people. It's hurting us. It's hurting them. Uh, who benefits from this? Corporations, the uh, war machine, uh, officials, governments? Uh, is this a great way to uh, uh, have another uh, 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 diversion from not having to look at uh, the economy and where we're headed. You know, maybe uh, in the midterms, uh, they're thinking that instead of blaming them, that we'll blame Russia for everything um, because they don't no longer have the Critter 19 to blame. So they need something to blame in this upcoming elections that they're going to get trounced in. But all right, <laughs> uh, listen, I'm going to get out of the uh, political stuff here. I'm going to talk about a few more things. Food crisis. I did tell you yesterday I went out and bought extra food. I've had freeze-dried food for some time, only because of uh, we, you know, we live in Florida, man. We get a class, you know, a big uh, uh, Category 5 storm come through here. Uh, it could really you know, knock out food for some time. I've been through that already. And uh, uh, so I got food for that, but also in the potential of a worldwide shortage. We might be uh, looking uh, at uh, uh, grocery shelves being a lot more empty than we're used to, but I hope that doesn't happen. Uh, short squeeze eruption in oil, um, two, I'm not sure you came more losing, one hard asset beach gold and silver. There's some good articles in here, actually, I would read. Uh, this is absolutely true, uh, no doubt about that, and I believe this whole administration, uh, current administration, is bat, uh, S-H, star, T, insane, absolutely. And what else is going on here? U.S., that was stupid, U.S. sending so <laughs> we're sending them. 70-year-old technology. Can you imagine the poor Ukrainian soldier that's got to get behind one of these S-400s or whatever the heck they are? I think they're earlier than that. Uh, no way, I'm not going to go man that thing. <laughs> A giant target. Oh, yeah. And, uh, oh, gosh, this whole thing right here is breaking the news right here. And I like Joe Rogan a lot. He's absolutely correct. The media coverage of that is uh, uh, just ridiculous. But, again, what have I been telling you about corporate media? Lying, lying bastards, lying bastards. And uh, I think I'm going to call it, folks. Otherwise, this can get very lengthy if I start going into that stuff. And let's see what else. I got some questions to uh, respond to here. I'd like to thank everybody for watching yesterday's video. And let's go down here. Where is that one? Uh, last, I'm glad to hear your liver's still working. I didn't throw off too many today. <laughs> too many digresses, monkey hammers, or uh, f bombs. Let's see. Uh, your text, yep, that's true, and I am, Mr. Uh, uh, Michael. I'm wearing my Facebook, uh, getting removed from Facebook as a badge of honor. Uh, let's see, Francis Bacon. Oh, he's not related to Kevin Bacon. He translated the Bible. <laughs> and uh, let's see here, what else? Where, there, there's a question. The U.S. dollar is dying and it has lost its buying power. If it's replaced with a gold-backed currency with a price tag on a gold drop because the dollar has more value when it's backed by gold, Gold is a great wealth preserver too, but what happens when the dollar becomes real money again? Will gold cost $36 per ounce? No, no, never gonna happen. Um, 
you know, I don't think we're ever going to get rid of a fiat dollar. They may change it to a digital uh, form or something like that, which I'm hoping they don't do. Folks, if you think we have trouble now, wait till they try to push you into a cashless society where when you say something they don't like, they take all your money away from you. Remember the Canadian truckers? All right. Uh, but uh, uh, I don't see that happening at all. I don't think we'll ever see gold cost 36 U.S. dollars per ounce ever, ever again. Uh, 36,000 per ounce maybe, 3,600 per ounce, but never 36 dollar per ounce again. And uh, that's my opinion. Thanks for asking the question, Temp. Haven't seen you out there before, and I appreciate you viewing the videos. Well, Co. Edward Electrum, uh, digress is a new drinking game. <laughs> you can do use digress. You can use an F bomb, depending on your your drinking ability. If you wanted to drink as much as possible, Monkey Hammer was the one to drink on, and then Digress would be second. And then, hey, I did have my F-bomb days, though, that you would have been pretty wasted. So, <laughs> all right, thanks for watching, Electrum Celtic Knot, uh, Beto D, and uh, let's see, putting away gold and silver. Yeah, good idea. And uh, Voodoo says, my opinion on Bitcoin follows equities market, basically what uh, Alistair McLeod was talking about, purchasing power of the dollar. All right, appreciate that comment. Uh, every day, ask crypto people and explain why it follows equities, nothing but crickets. Yeah, it is kind of quiet. I expected someone to tell me that, you know, why the uh, uh, Bitcoin was following what appears to be the NASDAQ now. Um, Brian, you said that during times of hyperinflation, people own gold and silver uh, sold in the currency. With digital dollars, are we going to have to sell for digital, or do you think some kind of underground currency will emerge? Uh, John, I think that we should do everything we can, kicking and screaming to not going to the digital world. We should reject it in every way, shape, and form that we can. Reject digital dollars, reject a digital fiat, reject anything digital coming from the government because you know where it's gonna head. It's gonna head into them taking it away from you when they don't like what you say. And remember, it's not dissimilar to what Assad and what the other foreign countries are doing. They're getting, they're de-dollarizing. Why? Because they know that the idiots and the morons and the crooks in Washington, D.C., and the officials up there as well, uh, if they don't like what they're, you're going to say that, and countries don't like, they don't like what countries are doing, they'll deplatform your ass. They'll take your money away and they'll try to turn you into a nothing burger. All right? And again, Americans, you, you, me, everyone we talk to, we should reject any, any idea and reject. Uh, the product itself of them coming out with the digital dollar. I will not use it. I will not screw with it. I want nothing to do with it. I don't care if they gave it to me for free. Well, maybe if they gave it to me free, I'd turn it into gold. But uh, I don't want anything to do with it. And uh, I'm going to go down that road kicking and screaming. As should you and as should your children and the young people out there. And if the young people don't understand it, they need to, you need to explain to them that this is the government's way of controlling them. And uh, you know young people, they don't like to be controlled. Once you explain it to them in a logical way, they'll understand that digital currencies is nothing but a form of control, another form of control. Well, let's see what else. Uh, Aldous Huxley, yeah, you know, he wrote, uh, I didn't read that book, but I am going to put that on my read list at some point, Silver Hyman. Thanks for uh, bringing that up. And uh, Big J was dabbling in buying Canadian. Sure, why not? Oh, no, no, no. For the five years, I've seen what Canadian governments did. I'm going to believe that you must have alternative money saved for these days. Yeah, kind of what we were just saying. And uh, appreciate the comment there, Big J, as well. Well, I think I'm going to call it right now. Interesting show today. Remember, my theme for the year is think for yourself and always question authority. Uh, it's something that uh, I think has made me a much smarter person. And to this day, I still question what I think I know. You know, because you got to ask yourself, where did the narrative in my, where did the narrative of the facts come from that I believe today? Was it from my school? Was it from my government? Was it from the corporate news I watch? Was it from my parents? Okay, you know, where did you get the idea that Santa Claus was real? It was from your parents. <laughs> and then at some point, you probably question yourself, or maybe your parents fessed up and said that no, Santa Claus doesn't exist. But no less, question your own narrative, folks. I think it's important, and you'll be much smarter for it. Well, that's it. This is Brian Kuzma with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea. Call me anytime at 954-493-8811 between the hours of 10 and 4 if you want to do any business. And I'm here in South Florida. Again, if you don't live in my area, unfortunately, I can't do business with you. Sorry, folks. But this is why I encourage you to find yourself a good local dealer. Hey, thanks for watching and have yourself a great day. I'll talk to you tomorrow, hopefully.